Hey everyone! In this video, we're going to look at the connection between math, poetry, and nature. Let's go! Let's start with poetry, Sanskrit poetry in particular. In Sanskrit poems, there are two types of syllables, long syllables and short syllables. Long syllables have two beats, and short syllables have one beat. So, a long syllable would be this long, and a short syllable would be this long. Now, let's suppose that you want to write a rhythm with a certain number of beats, say, four. How many ways are there to use long syllables and short syllables to form this rhythm? Well, you could have four short one-beat syllables or two long two-beat syllables. You could also have a combination of two short syllables and one long syllable. In total, that would make five possible combinations. Let's make a table so we can see this pattern more clearly. For a one-beat rhythm, there's only one combination, one short. For a two-beat rhythm, there are two combinations, two shorts or one long. For a three-beat rhythm, there are three combinations, three short, one short and one long, and one long and one short. We've already done the four-beat rhythm, so I'm just going to put this here. All the po possible combinations are shown here. For the five-beat rhythm, we have eight combinations as shown here. Please note that a one represents a short, and a two represents a long. By now, most of you probably recognize this pattern. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. This is a Hemachandra sequence discovered by the Indian poet and polymath Acharya Hemachandra around the year 1150 AD. Now, it's more commonly known as the Fibonacci sequence, after the Italian mathematician Leonardo of Pisa, also known as Fibonacci. However, knowledge of the sequence dates all the way back to the Indian mathematician Akarya Pingala in the 2nd century BCE. The Hemachandra sequence, or the Fibonacci sequence, is notorious for popping up everywhere we look. For one, it turns up in Sanskrit poetry, of course, and Hemachandra explained this in a very interesting manner. He simply stated that every end beat rhythm ends in either a short or a long. Just like that. Done. But let's take a closer look at this. How many end beat rhythms are there? Let's call this H of N. If you have N n beat rhythm that ends in a short, you have n minus 1 beats left to fill. So how many n beat rhythms end in a short? Well, it's just the number of n minus 1 beat rhythms, or h of n minus 1. If you have an n beat rhythm that ends in a long, then you have n minus 2 beats left to fill. So how many n beat rhythms end in a long? Well, the number of n minus 2 beat rhythms, which is h of n minus 2. And from there, we get that the number of n beat rhythms, h of n, is equal to the sum of h of n minus 1 and h of n minus 2. But this isn't the only application of the Fibonacci sequence. It also came up in the breeding of rabbits. That's actually how Fibonacci discovered it, in the spirals of pine cones, and in the seed and petal structure of many flowers. Let's take a look at a beautiful example. What you see here is a head of sunflower seeds. You can see the seeds positioned in a spiral. Interestingly enough, the seeds spiral in more than one direction. Three, in fact, even though I only draw two. If you count the number of spirals twirling in opposite directions, the number of spirals are actually almost always two conductive Fibonacci numbers, which I find very interesting. Another really cool thing about Fibonacci numbers is how they relate to the golden ratio. So, what's a golden ratio, you might ask? Well, two quantities are in the golden ratio if their ratio is equal to the ratio of their sum to the larger quantity. Now that sounded a little bit convoluted and confusing, so let me put it mathematically. Mathematically, for real numbers, a is greater than b, is, which is greater than zero, we have a plus b over a equals a over b, which equals phi. Here, phi is the golden ratio. Let's see if we can compute phi, shall we? 
So from the equation we just wrote down, I can substitute phi equals a over b into a over b equals a plus b over a to get 1 plus 1 over phi equals phi. Now, all we have to do is multiply both sides by phi, and we get phi squared equals phi plus 1. And then we can manipulate that some more to get phi squared minus phi minus 1 equals 0. And that's a quadratic equation, which means it has two solutions. Phi equals 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2, which is approximately equal to plus or minus 1.618033. The solution phi is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2, which is approximately equal to 1.618033, is the golden ratio. Now, the golden ratio has been of interest for a very long time due to the fact that many believe that its proportions are aesthetically pleasing. Many artists and architects incorporate it into their work usually in the form of a golden rectangle, a rectangle in which the ratio of a longer side to the shorter side is the golden ratio. Okay, okay, that's cool and all. But how does all of this even relate to the Fibonacci sequence? Well, the golden ratio actually is the limit of the ratios of successive terms of the Fibonacci sequence. To put it in mathematical terms, it's the limit of h of n plus 1 over h of n as n goes to infinity. The Fibonacci sequence, or the Hemachandra sequence, has been around for a very, very long time. In this video, I've only just grazed the tip of the iceberg. There are so many cool and amazing connections you can make with this sequence that you can and should go learn more about. I hope this video inspires you to explore more mathy stuff. In parsing, I would like to leave you with a poem I wrote. Its syllable count follows the Fibonacci sequence. Such a poem is called a fib. Here it goes. I wrote this fib to tell you about cool numbers for three blue one browns math challenge. Thanks for watching, everyone. I had a lot of fun making this video, actually, and I definitely learned a lot. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you.